generation looks at its mothers if it is to develop. It involves putting in place policies that provide for the growth and development of its citizens. But policies that do not protect the integrity of women compromise national development because the women, mothers and the girl child are not protected. But mentoring and empowerment program for young women, MEMPROW, Uganda is building capacity of young women between the ages of 14 to 29. It is a human rights feminist organization for girls and young women across the globe. And why girls in particular? It's because of the challenges that the girls go through. Well, we appreciate that the, the boys also have challenges, but we find that in our communities they, are more, they have more privileges than the girls. But in Uganda, there are emerging cases of domestic violence, early marriage and teenage pregnancy, which have compromised the dignity of women. This is the focus of MEMPROW, to promote the rights of young women. MEMPRO believes in the power of women. Even when we have a change in one girl's life, we count that. The girls, at the time we find them, they are hopeless. So the mothers have the burden. The girls also feel that she is the burden. She is sexually abused. She is physically abused. She's emotionally abused. So we find them at a state way which is really bad and hopeless. The program is stretched to West Nile, where cases of child marriage are common. The figures showed that the rate of teenage pregnancy in West Nile is at 26%, which is higher than the national average of 25%. So that's why one of the reasons we targeted West Nile, and in West Nile we work with Pakwach District, Arua District, Nebi District, and Zombo District. And our primary target are girls who are child mothers, so they are stigmatized both at school and in the community and they have a baby and they are a burden to the household. So it is very challenging for them because they come, they look and they no longer value themselves. But domestic violence is common because men do not provide for their families. Within the family, girls are tormented as their mothers are battered. The girls later go into early marriage seeking solace. You must change the families. You can change them from schools, but they will go back to the same family that has, that continue to abuse the children, that continues to disorient them. MEMPRO has done a great job in trying to change the mindset of the population, but also to engage practically these teenage uh, girls in what they are supposed, supposed to do. The environment under which they survive is pathetic. But in Nebi district, Memprow's strategic intervention has empowered girls with knowledge and skills to earn a livelihood, prevent violence, and transform negative cultural norms and mindsets. The intervention has changed the livelihoods of teenage mothers in the region. They have empowered them through training them, uh, training them on social survival skills, entrepreneurship, and also how to look after themselves. And most of these girls have actually picked up and are now doing very well compared to how we actually found them. These are child mothers Memprow selected from communities to empower and become confident individuals. They are training in soap making as an alternative to improve their livelihood. The Memprow has taught me a lot. I know how to protect myself. I know how to say a big no. I got a skill of, of keeping my, my poultry from Mempro and how to plate very well. Then I will make that soap. Of course, now I've got the talent. This training gives additional skills to these child mothers and a livelihood after training in skills of individual interest. Also, we have this radio program where I always go with a CDO. We always go to sensitize the community on how best they can protect their children and girls especially, and uh, free from violence and abuses. Faith Adudango is 14 years. She lives in Anjao village, Karunga Parish, Nebi Sub County. She is among the 40 vulnerable beneficiary child mothers Memprow selected and trained in tailoring and has accumulated stock to earn a livelihood. She makes clothes of different fashions and styles, 
which she sells to clients around her home. But the success of this program has been due to close monitoring and follow-up of child mothers who need guidance. Memprao staff follows up the child mothers in different areas they operate. In Arua district, Memprao has also intervened to restore hope in the girl child. The livelihoods of families here seem to be the source of problems to the girl child. When you go to some of the households, uh, the parents uh, are violent in their households. What makes the parents, parents violent is after taking alcohol, they cannot give special time to sit with the children. They are not even giving or expressing love to their family. They are very aggressive. The reason why they are very aggressive is the income level is very low. We are working with a group of uh, child mothers, duty bearers and community leaders to see alternatives to the issue of teenage pregnancy and to see how we can build a coalition of community members to end the vice. Gassi Florence is a mother and housewife living in Comte village, Okea Parish. She sells fish and distills liquor to earn a living for the family, together with her husband who earns from carrying passengers on a motorcycle. The viper will end up in the pot. That is, they will call it alcohol. I'm making alcohol. The other one is I'm selling fees. This is now the ready. What we are going to put here for selling. This is the source of survival for the family. But when their firstborn daughter, Marcia Kevin, got pregnant at 16 years, the husband was unhappy. When the girl half married, she came to me, she told me that he is not good. He delivered the baby. I just stayed to start to keep the baby. I keep her after that. We, we return our daughter to, back to school. I was too stubborn. I could not listen to my parents' advice. So they used to tell me not behave in such a way, but I could not. The only thing that I could tell them, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so they, they kept on telling me not to repeat myself with such kind of behaviors. Uh, uh, mine was, uh, I could not. So I met a friend. We started dating ourselves from there. I just, I just find myself pregnant. I don't know how. So from there, my father was extremely annoyed. It was a mistake because I didn't expect it to happen to me. From that training, I really learned a lot of things. I learned how to do business, how to take care of my child, as well as myself, and how to counsel other young teenagers, and how to make liquid soap. Teenage pregnancy is common in West Nile subregion with three out of five underage girls of between 12 and 17 years getting pregnant in a period of five months. Provisional records at the Community Development Office in Nebi District show that for Kochi Parish, Nebi and Kaluang sub-counties in West Nile, between March and June 2020, 40 girls have got pregnant. The number of teenage mothers is high. If you look at this age of 16 to 18, we have about 46 girls in two parishes alone. What is uh, bringing us most problems with the girls getting pregnant is the market day. Culturally, in West Nile, girls are a source of wealth for a family bride price and can be married off at any age. The Nebi family system stops looking after the children when they attain 10 years. Both boys and girls are relocated outside the main cottage, leaving teenage girls fall prey to men. When the offences are reported to police, parents negotiate it out with the culprits. Normally used to do that case, we as LCs, we can't handle that one. Eh? We just refer that parents of that girl to the police. Most of the parents also 
do not consider issues of um, teenage pregnancies as, as, as defilement. Defilement to them is only as far as somebody had sex with my daughter is concerned. Now when it gets, it results into a pregnancy, the first thought is always, can the family sit? Can we negotiate? Can they at least accept to take care of the girl or can the girl go and get married to the, to the man or the boy? Poverty is the key driver to child marriage as families tender their children for bride price. The weak laws do not provide for police to investigate the offences as culture compromises the evidence. In Arua district alone, we registered defilement. 126 cases were reported in Arua. 56 are still under inquiries. 24 were put away and 46 are in court. We registered 17 cases of rape. Two are still under inquiries. Four were put away and six are uh, yet in court. You find that uh, many of these cases happen, but they are not reported to police. The few cases which are reported to police and are registered under defilement are these ones where negotiation has failed. Girls who drop out of school due to pregnancy never get a chance to return to school. This has resulted in two low literacy levels among women in West Nile. Domestic violence prevalence, poverty and early marriage. Suda Viola, is a resident of Maracha village Paju sub-county, is now 18 years old. She dropped out of school at 16 years. She was pregnant. But Mempro gave them training. There are so many things I learned from there. I learned how to do a business. I learned how to take care of my child and myself. So when I came back home, I told my mother about the training. I went and bought some tomatoes and onions. Then I sold them and I was able to get much money. The prospect of developing the girl child in West Nile region lies in the hands of parents, policy makers and advocacy groups psychosocial training where we were counseling them and also bringing them to a place of self-love into a place of starting to seek for alternative means and they are doing businesses and their parents are actually supporting them to look after their babies something which was not happening before we called their parents we had meetings with them and trainings for them basic trainings in gender trainings in human rights the girls uh, some of them who had been chased away from home actually reunited back with their families after that meeting and some of them have ended up actually being given second chances to go back to school. Our conviction in doing our work is once a girl is trained as she develops into a woman she's supported she is in a safe environment. This girl who is with the mother of the nation will bring up a nation that is free of violence, that has the rights protected, and that has equal opportunities for development. Their contribution to the economy will be great, and their contribution to the health of our nation will be great. <laughs>